what this is going to talk about are the the purifications that you want to complete in order to get to the level of reaching the super mundane nibbana this is what this is actually about okay now the purification that that is in this sutta there are seven pieces there are six pieces that are conditional in life meaning like you think of dependent originates all conditional in order for it to happen nothing happens without a condition okay and the last piece is unconditional and that's nibbana uh, it's a funny term to say that nibbana is unconditional to me when i finished this you tell me what happens to you when you listen to this but the reason i'm saying the state itself is unconditional i agree but it's a funny thing because when you think about it, in order to reach cessation and experience Nibbana, there is a prerequisite condition that must be reached for that to happen, isn't there? So actually to experience, to get there, definitely it, it has a condition relation, conditional relationship. But once there, it's unconditional. And we'll talk about that at the end a little bit. So the first one, they had these seven, you're going to hear them. I want you to hear them first before we go through, okay? So the first one is purification of virtue. That's the sila, visuddhi. Visuddhi means purification. So purification of the virtue. And um, the second one is purification of mind, the chitta vasudhi, overcoming the five hindrances through, I'm going to say, samatha and vipassana. In the text, in the notes in the book, it says vipassana, insight and vipassana, okay? I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say samatha and vipassana because that's how we're getting there. In the third one, um, the purification of view, the Didi Vasudhi, understanding the uh, and defining the nature of the five aggregates. And this includes shifting your mind from anatta to anatta. So, and taking things less personally than taking them personally. overcoming doubt or purification your mind with doubt now remember you go too far into uh sotapanna one of the one of the things that is removed is doubt that falls off that's what the top three uh bottom three or worse top three i say top three fetters okay one of those is give, no more doubt Purification of knowledge and vision, the first one of what is path and what is not path. This is talked about in the suttas in various places because if you're on path, you begin to understand what is not path. Or if you find what you think, this is really what he must have been practicing and you have no doubt, you realize what wasn't. And, the, and you realize most of the time when you find, identify not path, okay, it's because it, you weren't moving down the path. So to me, everything comes back to operational or not operational regards to the path. The correct discrimination between the false path of the ecstatic, um, exhilarating experiences uh, and the true path of insight into anicca, dukkha, and anatta, seeing anicca, dukkha, and anatta very clearly. And I really like the way they're talking about that one in the notes because with our practice, we really do experience every time you do the six R's, anicca, dukkha, and anatta. We understand what dukkha is. We understand the hindrances are always, always temporary. They're always hooked into a Nietzsche. So it's a matter of why is this happening to me? It doesn't make sense because whatever it is, it's going to change. So this is internalizing, internalizing anatta. 
and internalizing the impersonal nature and the, the fact it's going to change, okay? Next one is the um, purification of the, by knowledge and vision um, of the way. Now, now, when they say the way here, it's telling me, it's meaning the Eightfold, and using the whole entire Eightfold Path functionally in life helps you to be in a position where you can be able to support your practice comprises the ascending series of insight knowledges, we're going to let that go, of the super mundane path. But if we looked at those insight knowledges, which I did one time, <laughs> it was a very funny thing because Bhante came in one morning and said to us, you know, I'm a Vipassana teacher. And we said, you are not a Vipassana teacher. <laughs> and he said, yes, I am. Have you had any insights since you have been practicing this way? And we said, what do you mean? And he asked us the questions, and we had seen all of these insights that they talk about. But the funny thing about it was, we were not dividing everything up and attempting to see one and attempting to see the next or the next, but we had the answers for seeing all of these naturally. That's what was interesting to me. Okay, and that's the Nana Dasana Visuddhi. And that's, so this is the first six and conditional, and then Nibbana has not arisen through any kind of condition, an unconditioned state. And I take issue with the way that was written, because you had to leave the building, go into anatta frame of mind, let everything go in order to get there to experience cessation.